Hello, I'm Brian Croy Dragon, and here we are again. Yet a well, shouldn't say yet another. This is only the second video covering uh bad book covers. They confound us, bamboozle us. We're drawn to them for some reason. And we're going to cover some. How many? Oh, I don't know, but... Why don't we start with something simple? One of the classics. I mean, a lot of these are the classics. I'm the kind of guy who reads the classics. I love the classics. But first, let's start with my copy. A picture of Dorian Gray. Don't know what the painting is, but... It looks quite good. Maybe it was even uh, meant for the story. Having took a quick moment to actually check my copy, um, yeah, it just said it's from somewhere. It doesn't exactly say what the subject is, but it very much seems to fit. And then we have this. What can I call this except a Victorian era Two Face? Because let's face it, it definitely fits. Oh, good lord. The, the hair color doesn't even fit. Dorian is blonde in the novel. Why? Why dark hair? Oh, I know the the changing standards of what is considered. Attractive? Not that I've ever, ever really understood it. I mean, hair's hair. Why? Why? How? How and why does one hair color look more attractive than the other? Oh, jeez, like, I can't even tell. And what's the right half supposed to be? And that's supposed to be what his painting is, starting, is looking like, uh, as he commits found deeds, sins, crimes, whatever you want to call them. Now, this is hardly the worst one in the bunch. I'm, in all honesty, I'm starting us off, well, with something not exactly insane. But, uh, hold on to your hats, hold on to your butts. Preferably simultaneously, if you want to be literal. Because, uh, oh lord. Let's wait until you see what we have next. Next up, we have something from James Joyce. And no, it is not Ulysses. I have not even read Ulysses. But anyway. It is a portrait of the artist as a young man. That is my specific copy. Of, well, I mean, to say that's the cover I have. Uh, my copy is not nearly so faded as that. And uh, here's this one. Oh my <laughs> lord. Oh, good lord. I just look at this and I'm wondering, what the sideways ass am I even looking at? Oh, good lord. Uh, it just looks so idiotic, so stupid. Who? Somebody actually approved this. Are you serious? Uh, my copy looks dignified. That that does not look. No, it, it just does not look good. It looks awful. It looks terrible. Uh, who came up with this? Who approved this? A pair of lunatics? Oh, good lord. Well, is this the worst? I don't know. We'll have to... Honestly, 
I don't know. I'll, I'll let you be the judge of what's the worst of them. But anyway, let's move on. And now we come to something from Louisa May Alcott, Little Women. Yes, this is my copy. It looks very dignified, doesn't it? Well, uh, how about this? What do you say about this? What do you think was going on in the head of the person who came up with this? The person who approved this? This does... No, it does not bring the 1860s in the United States to mind at all. But what is even... I just don't know. I'm not sure if the person put in charge of the cover had a read the book. I'm not sure if the person, that, oh, who am I kidding? Neither of them had read the book, clearly. They just either did whatever or found whatever, slapped it on, and, uh, well, gave us less, which, um, yeah, no, it doesn't, doesn't fit, it doesn't, uh, what even is the counterpart of the Victorian era in the United States, um, yeah, what's that period called, uh, I don't know. Um, but this is, uh, well, I don't know what to call this besides mind-boggling, but this is not the only one. Please hold on. Yes, uh, isn't this, uh, Oh, who am I kidding? I can't even put on the act. Uh, no, this is clearly something for Maoist China. Uh, 50s, 60s. Uh, I don't like I even know. Uh, despite uh, occasionally reading about the Korean War, I've very rarely read about Mao Zedong's... Uh, Life. He died in, what, the 60s? Uh, the 70s? Yeah, he died in the 70s, but, um... I mean, I'm not opposed to the idea of a, uh, change of setting, but, um... Well, I... Well... This is Sheba Blake. Uh, if you re remember the one for the secret agent from the previous video uh, covering this, we, uh, yeah, saw that they used an image of the Marvel character Bishop for the cover. So, what is this taken from? Please tell me. Uh, it's clearly something set during Maoist China. And it clearly has a female lead, but I really don't think uh, this works. I, I'm not opposed to a change of setting. I mean, if an adaptation were to set it in Maoist China, sure, I'd give it a read, uh, give it a watch. But um, this is... Clearly, the cover of something else. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Next up, we have an epic from Victor Hugo. I feel like that needs some specification, since two of his best-known works are epics. The Hunchback of Notre Dame known by its original title, Notre Dame de Paris as well. 
And that's a very good um, cover, isn't it? It's just, you know, a a photography. Uh, probably in the spot where <laughs> where f where Quasimodo uh, pushed Frollo off the balcony, if you're in any way familiar with the original novel. Now, let's... Uh... Oh, jeez. Yeah, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. It's also from Shiva Blake Publishing, so... Mm. I've, uh, I have read the book. I, I own two graphic novel, no wait, three graphic novel adaptations. Why did I say two? Why did I forget about the other? Uh, I own six screen adaptations. Um... I'm, well, uh, let's see here, um, on iTunes there is a audiobook version read by Christopher Lee, uh, the quote-unquote cover is a image of Christopher Lee's face, the title and the author is credited as Gaston LaRue, who would be the author of the Phantom of the Opera, but that's nowhere near as bad as this. Well, okay, that's bad, but this is just... What on earth am I even looking at? What, what was this originally for? Uh, was this for a makeup guy? A teaching people how to put on mascara or some eyelash thing? Like, I even know. It, 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 it has nothing to do with the book. Nothing to do with the book. Nothing to do with any of the screen adaptations. So you can't... Oh my god. Oh, my God. You know, I've uh, seen my fair share. I've seen a Jungle Book cover, which just, you know, takes uh, some of the Disney portrayals of the characters and, uh, you know, puts a very bad green filter over it in a failed attempt to... Uh, Failed slash poor attempt to evade, uh, you know, uh, copyright since Disney has copyright on their designs, I'm pretty sure. But, uh, this is pretty far up there for being very much divorced from, uh, Yeah, it's pretty divorced. Uh, I I'd say a uh, a poster of the nineteen twenty three film, which I'm going to go on record is public domain, would have worked much much better. I just what is this from? What is what was this originally for? I know I've asked that before, but I'm really baffled here. And if you're wondering why I'm so much talkative, if you remember the pre if you've seen the previous video, I actually had a pretty bad cough at the time. I've still got a bit of a cough, but not so bad that I can't ramble on. I look at this and please someone explain it to me. A a historical epic set in 15th century Paris. Mm. 
What does that, what does that have to do with that? Someone, oh, for God's sake. Oh, jeez, I, oh. I own six screen adaptations on DVD. I think I might have seen at least eight. No, no, no. Nine. I've seen... No, I've seen ten. Yes, I have seen ten. But regardless, even the worst... No, eleven. We cannot leave out the secret of the hunchback as much as... A lot of people would probably like to. But still, all... Even the worst screen adaptation looks... Better than this. Oh, good lord. If Idris Elba's production ever, you know, actually gets made, I, I hope. If Idris Elba's, if Disney's live action remake, either of those ever get made, I hope that, that their posters or whatever are better than this. Oh, jeez. Anyway, let's move on. Now, for something from Charlotte Bronte. Uh, yes, not much of a wonder what it could be. Jane Eyre. Of course, my specific copy is in better condition than that is. Uh, for the most part. But, let's just look at that. One of the greatest love stories of all literature. And compare it to less. What is this? Is this from the 30s? It just... Oh, it boggles the mind. But actually, hold on. Just have to quickly check. Okay, after a quick check, uh, no other Jane Eyre's, but I did find one that we missed. So we'll be moving on to that, but yeah, that doesn't fit at all. Uh, yeah, so here we are. Back to the picture of Dorian Gray, and... Well, it's a picture, but it's not of Dorian Gray. We're even in this the set. That, that's not Victorian Britain. That's not Victorian England. It's not Victorian London. Where the heck is that? Oh, anyway, let's, uh... Let's carry on. And now that we are back on track, having covered uh, the one that I forgot, we come to something from Arthur Conan Doyle. No, it is not Sherlock Holmes. This is something that features his favorite character, Professor Challenger. It is The Lost World. And, uh... Yeah, it's better than, uh, well, less, which is the cheapest thing imaginable, and, uh, it, it looks like something that was just found online, like, it's a very good photograph, but it's still just a photograph of a toy dinosaur that was probably found at a dollar store. Oh, Lord. Even if it's not something that was found online and they just, you know, took a camera, took a toy dinosaur and, you know, put it on some rock. It's still, it's still the cheapest thing imaginable. But of course, I've seen a worse one. I've seen a worse one. Uh, not that I can't find it. I mean, it's still pretty cheap looking, just some... Toy dinosaurs in a diorama. It looks cheaper than this. Uh, I, I can tell you that. But, um, yeah, it's still very, very cheap. Oh, my lord. Anyway, uh, we may be getting Sherlock Holmes either 
less time on the next, but uh, we won't see just how many we do and just how uh, blah 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 blah. Let's just get on with it. Next up is uh, something a little bit different. You see, I own the complete works of William Shakespeare. I used to have uh, in the individual place, but ever since I got that, I, uh, you know, sold them. But, uh, let's start with Hamlet. And, yes, yes, that I'm no stranger to, uh, characters' genders being changed or the setting being changed, but, um,. In what production was... Hmm. In what production was the Alas Poor Yorick bit done with Hamlet completely naked with Yorick's skull being played by a seashell? Yes, it's clearly something pre-existing, because like who we're dealing with, it's Shiva Blake Publishing, but, uh... What? I mean... The setting... The traditional setting is the Viking Age. And yes, I have... seen the, uh... Setting changed on more than one occasion. I mean, that's excluding those that are just lazy and uh, go for Elizabethan attire. I mean, we've I've seen uh, a uh, well, obviously, I've seen a Victorian setting, I've seen uh, a modern setting, I've seen a uh, round World War One setting, but uh, yeah, I've not seen less. But uh, this isn't it, no no, got another from Shakespeare. And here we are with Macbeth. Uh, Along with Hamlet, one of my favorite of Shakespeare's plays, one of my favorite of his tragedies, and, uh... What? Okay, to start off, Macbeth was a man who actually existed. He was born in 1005 in Scotland and died in 1057. I've seen my share of, uh, setting changes. I've seen... Australia's gangland, I've seen a, uh, Soviet Scotland, so to put it, but, uh, what on earth is less? That's, uh, what is that, the Edwardian area, uh, era? It's, uh, doesn't really, I mean, what is that even taken from? Is that from a, uh, Edwardian catalog? Oh my lord. It's... Oh my lord, I just don't know what to make of this. It's weird, but for a completely different reason. Oh, yeah. I uh, forgot to, um... Manga Shakespeare. Manga Shakespeare's Hamlet, uh... 22nd century setting, uh... Mega Shakespeare's Macbeth, a post-apocalyptic setting where samurai, mutants, and cyborgs rule. Definitely doesn't fit less, now does it? Anyway, uh, let's carry on.
Okay, now we're getting into the Sherlock Holmes. Uh, I've got, I don't know, two, maybe three. But anyway, let's start with Sherlock Holmes, The Complete Novels and Stories, Volume 1. Now, why this if it's a, you know, the complete, you know, half of the complete, uh, canon, well, because the cover that we're, um, looking at currently is the Sign of Four, which is in this volume. And there it is! Is, is that a manga cover? It must be, right? Uh, anyway, it doesn't really fit. And let's see here, Sign of Four, um... The backstory for that one was, uh, that was in India, wasn't it? Yes, that was in India, and this is clearly not in any way related to India. Um, wait, wait, hold on, I think I see an artist's signature. Can anyone make that out? I... No, I can't, uh, read the handwriting. It, it... You know, uh, right next to the R and 4, I... I don't know what that says, uh... But, uh, maybe someone can figure it out and uh, we can be directed to... Whatever this is originally from, but anyway, to uh, the next, uh... Piece of... Holmes, uh, covers. And now we move on to Volume 2 for the obvious reason that that's, uh, well, which volume this story is in. And again, it fits, definitely fits, uh, the time when Dorian would have been writing. And now let's just take a look at this for the Hound of the Baskervilles that is, uh, Dear me, is that Air, Air Rock in, a, in Australia? Oh, that definitely doesn't fit. <laughs> Why would it ever? Oh, dear. Uh, yes, because clearly Henry Baskerville lived in a giant, on a giant rock, a giant plateau, whatever you want to call it, rock for, a giant rock formation. In a completely different country. Oh boy. Anyway, this is not the last one. And to finish up uh, on the Sherlock Holmes, we have. Excuse me. We have less. For God's sake. As you can see, we find ourselves looking at, uh, off-brand Harrison Ford, or whatever you want to call them. This is definitely a different setting, and yes, obviously, there has been a sci-fi adaptation, Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd Century. Anyone familiar with it? But, uh, this does not... Bit at all. This is again from Tutus slash Tutus, whatever the pronunciation is. Their only uh, one for this video, it seems. And uh, yeah, uh, just what exactly was this guy taken from? Oh god, like I even know, uh, this is from a publishing house that, uh, may, used to make their covers by, you know, photoshopping things off of other covers, uh, to create, well, these. Of course, I'm not exactly sure what to call them. Copyright infringement would obviously be something, but uh, I don't know if that's sufficient. 
But, uh, that <clears throat> would be all. Oh, good lord. And there's still more. Still, still more to go through. Well, that would have to be for next time. I'll see you then.